and I'll hand you over to our first presenter, Steve Ng, who's Manager Solutions Consulting at Automation Anyway. So he handles or manages the sales engineering team in the, the ASEAN region and to help adopt intelligent transformation by offering thought leadership around the region and facilitating the adoption of various digital technologies. And of course, RPA is famous for its robotic process automation solution. So with that, over to you, Steve. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm Steve here. So um, let me first, ah, okay. <laughs> Can everybody see the slides? If it's good, yeah. then, uh, okay, great. <clears throat> so let me start. So my, my session is around 10 minutes with uh, five minutes Q&A later. And uh, today I'm really going to talk about are you looking at RPA for your supply chain? So just a reality check on the supply chain, right? So th there are a few articles here where we all know that um, US, China trade tensions, there's COVID pandemic. has really highlighted that uh, the global supply chain model, something needs to change, right? Because uh, in surveys done, the disruptions caused by COVID-19 are affecting over 90% uh, of the Fortune 1000 corporations. Another survey done is actually for logistics companies, 36% uh, globally are looking to accelerate speed of automation, but 47% uh, in uh, APEC itself is actually planning to accelerate that. So similarly, digital transformation, 31% globally are looking into it, whereas uh, in uh, APJ here, 39% uh, are really looking at that. So what this tells us is that with these trade tensions, with COVID, uh, we should look into how to speed up this, uh, the automation and also undergo digital transformation to really sort of change and augment the business. So what are the challenges, right, you might ask, and what uh, can RPA do for supply chain? Uh, so these are some examples that um, our customers have done. And... Just to run through a few, right? So for example, from a demand uh, variability point of view, uh, having a human actually look up material price costing across different suppliers, different vendors, uh, is just actually very time consuming. So you can actually get uh, RPA bots to do that. So uh, for folks who do not know what's robotic process uh, automation, uh, just to give you a very quick overview is essentially you can get software bots that could run on your laptops or VMs to mimic human behavior. So you can actually get these bots to go to different supplier websites, download the price information and do the comparison. And similarly for in, uh, inventory management, right? So uh, imagine uh, a bot helping you going to multiple systems and your inventory management systems to actually track and look at what the uh, inventory or stocks that needs to be replenished uh, and uh, <clears throat> actually help in your uh, making sure that all the revenue, uh, all your stocks are well replenished, right? And also, uh, there are a lot of use cases in purchase order management, invoice management, returns and refunds processing. So if you talk to the people there, what they are doing is they need to review purchase orders. There are a lot of data entries for uh, invoices, data reconciliations going on, and uh, a lot of uh, manual efforts in returns and refunds processing. And all these, you can actually get uh, RPA or software bots to automate some of the processes for you. And uh, similarly, suppliers onboarding as well, right? So. Uh, in this uh, disruptive time, if you need to onboard suppliers quickly, you can actually get uh, software bots to do that quickly for you. And uh, another one good use case that we see is freight management. So for example, there's a lot of effort required to actually track where the freights are, cargo, whether it's arrived or not, whether it's in transit, email communications to supplier, customers, where the cargo is. And we do see uh, companies actually uh, adopting RPA to help automate that to provide a better, better customer service, uh, which I'll go through later, one of the example. And our things like contract review. So if you want the bot to actually do a first draft review, searching for keywords in a contract to see what the things to take note of, you can actually leverage on RPA to do that as well. So these are just some of the examples that uh, you can apply RPA to. Because it's not just limited to this, uh, there are a lot more use cases. <clears throat> but uh, these, are the, the, these are the use cases they were highlighting today. So why, why RPA would be important is, 
um, these software bots or digital workers actually complement human in our day-to-day -day, uh, processes and day-to-day -day work. So when human and digital workers work side by side, amazing things can happen, right? Because right now, if I don't have automation, I don't have RPA, human workers, I need to provide better value by talking to customers, engaging customers. But at the same time, I have a lot of mundane tasks, repetitive data entries, uh, repetitive uh, reporting to be done. So when we put them side by side, what we are actually doing is human workers focus on your customer engagement, leverage on your subject matter expertise, your domains to actually make better decision making, but leave a lot of the repetitive mundane work to software robots, digital workers. Let them do the data entries, let them extract the reports, let them track where the shipments are. And while we are doing that, we are actually also eliminating errors in data entry. And these software bots, they can run 24 by 7. So actually, we can actually uh, let them do a lot more uh, as compared to a human. And uh, how uh, Automation Anywhere's uh, digital workforce platform can help is, it's not just about the automation, right? We are talking about the whole life cycle where we provide functions for you to discover what processes to automate. You can get, uh, for example, your finance team, your operations team uh, to have a process recorder in place while they do their day-to-day -day work. And then we actually generate reports and dashboards to help you identify what are the processes worth uh, automating. Of course, to understand data, if you have invoices coming in, documents coming in, how do we extract all these data so that you can pass it on to RPA software bots to do data entries. And also analytics is there, right? Because I need to know uh, which processes are successfully automated, how is my ROI, and uh, what are the potential new processes that I can automate. So in short, by actually putting in this digital workforce uh, platform, we get better business resiliency and we can optimize label because now I have a software bots to complement me. I have faster cycle times because if you just imagine doing data entry uh, in terms of speed, uh, a bot does it much faster than a human. And uh, customer experience as well, because uh, they can focus now more on customer engagement and we increase product uh, employee productivity and also compliance and security. So just to give you a very quick example, uh, a process that you need to get uh, shipping tracking numbers, go to the website, can be MERS, DHL, generate the ship shipment status, save it to PDF, generate geolocation screenshots and send it to customers. So if you are talking about manually doing it 50,000 per year, uh, you are taking 8,000 plus hours to be invested in that. Uh, but if you get a digital worker, it could take one minute to do it as compared to 10 uh, for a human. And you're actually having 90% uh, savings uh, on a year. And on top of that, you have improved data accuracy, auditability, and enhanced customer service. Because if a human does it, I might do it uh, once every two days. But a software bot, if needed, I can get them to do it every hour. Uh, so that's one advantage of putting in RPA. So just to quickly highlight how you can start your RPA journey. So you don't always have to go for a big bang approach. We always advocate that you start right, scale fast and transform big. And what that means is uh, identifying the right process, uh, getting a process that gives you good ROI, creating the awareness, the champions, subsequently scaling fast by setting up center of excellence, uh, defining the roadmap of what you want to automate. And the end goal will be transform big where your human and digital workers become the new norm. And just to give you some statistics, like for most of the companies who started uh, RPA, their pilot tests, actually 75% of them are exceeded expectations. And if you look at it, the difference between RPA and other tools is within six months, uh, 40 over percent of them actually uh, achieve their ROI. So just to quickly highlight six quick steps to success, success uh, select the right process to automate, uh, build a solid business case with a good ROI, get the buy-in. Uh, of course, limit the scope. We are not trying to boil the whole ocean, but uh, incrementally offload the uh, human from repetitive work. Uh, have good set of data for training, for automation, and scale and expand from there. Okay, so my last slide in summary. So leveraging on an RPA or a digital workforce platform helps you be more resilient. You have a mixture of human and digital workforce. Helps you scale as well because now with digitization, you can do so much more. And also with insights, with uh, real-time insights into operational and business data, you can actually uh, better capture and uh, better improve your processes or look at 
what are the new things to transform as well. Yep, so that's it for me. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Steve. Um, we have some questions coming in for you already. Uh, let's go to okay. the first one, which is from Christopher Lim. And he's asking, uh, what are the skill sets needed to maintain and upkeep, upkeep an RPA? I mean, do you need, for example, a software programmer to maintain, to maintain all this? Uh, you don't really need to. It would definitely help in adoption. But essentially, the platform is designed. We have finance users, HR users, actually building bots on their own. Uh, but of course, after proper training, uh, the, pro the product is actually designed to help business users build bots as well. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, a I, question. Oh, sorry, uh, Bob. I, I just got yeah. one that came in my WhatsApp. I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, but um, go ahead, Roman. how long does it take to get trained, for example? Because I know Automation Anywhere has got a, a university, right? Yeah. So yep. on average, if I'm a HR practitioner, for example, I'm not a programmer, how long would it take me to get trained? Um, I would say it would take you roughly a month. And of course, there are different stages of maturity, right? But to quickly, for example, I, I give you an example, a customer that we enable the HR department to develop an automation for COVID temperature taking, that took like two weeks because it depends on the complexity of the process you're trying to automate. So uh, I guess for HR users, we can safely say within a week, uh, with, sorry, within a month, they can start to do simple automations. Yep. Mm. All right, thank you. Um, another, one, another question here. I think this relates to your, to your last slide on, on the six steps. The um, question um, is, um, how should an organization decide what process should be automated first? Because I think you talked about selecting the right process, but what, how should they decide what is the priority? Uh, yeah, I think general guidelines and uh, AA, we often help uh, customers plan that as well is, talk to the ground folks, look at uh, or start to ask them about what are the manual processes that they are doing today. And end of the day, we want to select a process that, uh, a manual process that is being done of very high frequency. So imagine this task, it is done daily. Every day, a human works on it for 30 minutes. It's going to give you more ROI as compared to selecting a monthly audit report or monthly, yearly kind of process to automate. So I would say high ROI means Something uh, very simple because we want short development. Something that uh, is done daily. Uh, something that takes up a lot of time for the human so that you can get, get quick ROI and also your employees can quickly see the end result. Yep. Okay, a very, a very technical question here. Uh, well, a technical question here. What sort of optical reader is used for invoices? So we have our own platform for that. We call it IQBot which actually uh, we incorporate machine learning to help extract information from PO's invoices. But underlying, there are also technology, uh, we use OCR engines like uh, Abby, Microsoft Azure, Google Tesseract, which we are the only platform where you can choose what OCR engine you want to use on top of the machine learning algorithms we provide. Mm. Yep. Okay. Uh, and the questions are coming in thick and fast. So I'll, I'll move on to the next one. <laughs> I think this relates to, because you talked a lot about ROI and it seems like very good and very quick ROI. So uh, the question is, what is stopping uh, RPA adoption? Why isn't it going on a lot faster than it, than it is? Um, I don't think it's stopping. From what I spoke, when I speak to customers, RPA is definitely in their mind. But I guess it's a matter of uh, prioritization and how they look at digital workers, right? Because you can look at RPA as a patchwork kind of framework to help you automate manual tasks. But you can also look at digital workers as something that should be part of your workforce. And I think it's a mindset change that RPA definitely needs to be there. You need to explore it. ROI is there. Uh, and uh, really go into the discussion of why uh, aren't more customers doing it. Yeah. Okay, this question is about how do you combat entrenching bad practices by automating them. So we all know you shouldn't automate a bad process. So where is this ethos of continuous improvement come in? You know, where, how does that all fit in here? Uh, in terms of let's not automate a bad process, let's fix the process first. Um, of course, RPA is one of the puzzle pieces to automation in general. When we talk about automation, there are also workflows, business process automation. And where RPA is very different is when you do a business process automation, 
uh, 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 workflow automation. You are looking at fine tuning your entire process. But when you look at RPA, it's really about taking what needs to be done today, quickly develop and automate that part, but at the same time, take small little tweaks to enhance the process because we, we don't want to fall into a trap where if you are talking about uh, tweaking the process for a finance AP process, which will take you two to three months to just to lock down the requirements. But by then, you are losing valuable time to quickly automate and also help your finance. I'll give you an example. A finance person, when you build a bot to help save one hour of my time, that's one hour of my time I can spend thinking about how to better digitize and automate the entire AP process. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm being told that we're out of time, so um, <laughs> Steve, I really want to thank you uh, both for your presentation and for the for the, your responses to, to our questions this morning. So, yeah, um, uh, Ramon, it's over to you. Yes, thanks. Thanks, thanks Bob. So, um, just for everyone tuning in, you know, um, we actually will have an opportunity to ask more questions at the end. Um, so, please feel free to do so. Um, we do have a couple of questions outstanding. Um, we didn't have time to ask uh, Steve from Automation Anywhere. So, Steve, are you still there? Yep, Steve? I'm still here. All right, good, good. Because we did have a couple of questions that uh, we didn't get time to ask you in particular. Uh, this question came in from Said Ali. Um, he's talking about an aging population, a mature work environment in the region. Um, but I think his question is really about, I think this question was maybe have been asked in another fashion, in another form earlier, but I think it's really about, again, how, what's the best way to start with RPA? How do we... Um, really get going with RPA from from having no RPA to the beginning where what is that process about um, yeah so I think the best way to start would uh, like, like what I mentioned in one of my slides to uh, first start right start a pilot uh, look at the processes and uh, what your employees are really doing manually right now uh, Actually, RPA, I look at it as humans also created a need for RPA. So take the example for me. Uh, 10 years ago, I'm using spreadsheets to do some of my uh, documentation. So when a system came out, then I'm using spreadsheets to do some of the reporting. So for humans, we always like to do something additional outside of the source systems that we have to actually improve our service either to our own management, to customers. And uh, I guess the best way to start is you can look at, uh, in terms of BUs, business units, you can look at operations, you can look at finance. Uh, those, they might have a lot of uh, manual tasks, uh, processes that deal with a lot of spreadsheets, emails. These are good processes to look at as well. And uh, ultimately also just look at the number of manual hours that are, the, they are being spent in these processes. And I guess that's where identifying that one or two that will really help to give you a good ROI and uh, save time and uh, start working on those. <clears throat> yep. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is also a follow-up question. If you recall the question we had about optical readers and invoices, you recall that one? Yep. Yeah. So the, um, Tim Ford is asking, uh, can the optical reader adjust itself to new styles? Yeah. So actually, uh, the, the advantage of... Um, our product as compared to a traditional OCR engine is if you remember five, 10 years ago, if I have 20 templates today, I need to pre-create 20 templates. If I have another five te new templates, I need to get IT to, pre -con to configure another five templates. So if actually machine learning and AI now being incorporated into part of this uh, um, function and module that we provide, essentially you upload everything at one shot to uh, our module called IQ Bot and it does the auto classification for you. It does the auto grouping. Uh, it mm. tries to leverage on machine learning to actually help you grab all the information out. So I would say most of the time, you might not have to do a lot of work. 
unless the, the, your invoice is totally out of this world. <laughs> the template is really different. But uh, mostly what we have done is we developed this model using most of the common templates we have seen. So like just slight adjustments to the templates, all that, uh, you won't have to redo everything. Yep. All right, okay. And this question is about RPA, RPA and social media. So can the RPA bot be deployed um, on a personal social account like LinkedIn, for example? So we, we do have customers who use RPA. Uh, I wouldn't say just social media, but um, it, messaging platforms in general. So we do have uh, RPA bots interacting with chatbots. We do have RPA bots reading and replying WhatsApp messages. Uh, we do have also customers who develop RPA bots to go to forums, to go to uh, Facebook, to comb some of these details. Uh, so I guess the product itself doesn't really restrict you, but sometimes you just have to take note of the, the source applications as well, right? Whether uh, LinkedIn allows us to do so, whether Facebook allows us to do so. That's that, another different question altogether. But with the platform, yes, essentially anything on a web browser, anything on your desktop, you can actually automate that. All right, okay. And another RPA question. Can I find, yeah, I know. <laughs> can I find RPA, or can I use RPA for supply chain planning operations such as work order creation, scheduling, is that, is that possible? Um, I would say it's possible, uh, but do, mm -hmm. do look at those. Um, I mean, a lot of platforms have been presented today, fantastic platforms with inbuilt capabilities, out-of-the-box functions, and RPA is not meant to rebuild everything from scratch, right? If you have these uh, uh, functions that you can rely on, do use that. RPA comes in to complement some of the manual data consolidation that you could be doing, uh, some of the cross-reference checks, or even if you're using spreadsheets to do scheduling, or you need to take that info to key into another system, that's where RPA can come in to help, yeah. All right, okay, okay, thanks, Steve. Um, Ramon, any, any questions on your side? For any of the analysts, no, come in. Um, I think we've got a few. But I hope we can save them for the one-on-one -on -one, um, consulting sessions that we have planned. So hmm. the admin from Logism will be in touch with all the participants today. And I think for the interest of time, we'll end here. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to um, say thank you very much to Steve Ng uh, from Automation Anyway. Um, really um, well done, Steve. And it looks like you had the most questions coming in. And I really liked your answer to the last question. Yeah. 